Camden, New Jersey was a popular place to settle early on due to it being right on the Delaware River. Having riverfront access at the time was necessary for the movement of people and goods in and out of the area. Its proximity to Philadelphia also helped the city increase population quickly. Then, the Camden and Amboy Railroad opened in 1834 and helped bring in even more residents. Howard Unruh served in World War II but came home a changed man. His paranoia led him to believe that the world was out to get him, and after arguments with his neighbors, he decided it was time to settle the score once and for all. This is Monsters. Howard Unruh was born on January 21, 1921 in Camden, New Jersey to Samuel and Frida Unruh. His parents separated when he was young and he and his younger brother James were raised by his mother. In high school, Howard was known to be shy and his yearbook picture said that he wanted to become a government employee. After graduating from high school, he joined the United States Army in 1942. I guess that is the easiest way to become a government employee. He was sent to Europe and served in Italy, France, Austria, Belgium, and Germany between October 1944 and July 1945. He was devoted to reading scripture, and his commander later said that he was a great soldier who never drank, swore, or chased girls. After being honorably discharged after the war, he returned to New Jersey where he lived with his mother. His brother said that he was moody and nervous after returning from the war. Back home, Howard worked at a sheet metal factory for a short time and then enrolled in the Temple University School of Pharmacy in Philadelphia but dropped out after a few months. After that, he turned the basement of his mother's home into a firing range where he spent all of his time practicing his shooting. His mother worked at a soap factory in order to support both of them. By this time, James had married and was living in Haddon Heights, just south of Camden. While living at his mother's house, Howard began getting into arguments with his neighbors, Maurice and Rose Cohen, who owned a drugstore behind his house. The Cohens regularly argued with Howard about him using the gate that separated the properties. They also complained about him turning his radio up too loud at night. On September 5, 1949, Howard had a date with a man at a local movie theater. They were going to see a double feature, first seeing Tom Conway in I Cheated the Law, and then The Lady Gambles, a Barbara Stanwyck vehicle. Unfortunately, traffic caused Howard to be late, and by the time he got to the theater, his date had left. He sat in the theater alone and watched several showings of both pictures before going home at about 3 a.m. As he laid in bed that night, he made the decision to get revenge on the neighborhood that he believed were all out to get him. At 7 o'clock the next morning, Howard's mother made him breakfast, which they ate together before she left the house to visit a neighbor. Howard got dressed and picked up a Ruger pistol. Some say it was a souvenir from the war, and others say he purchased it at a sporting goods store. He had two eight-round magazines and put more loose ammunition in his pocket. There were 16 rounds in his pocket when he was arrested. He also grabbed a knife and a tear gas pen, which is exactly what it sounds like, a device that looks like a pen but really sprays tear gas. Howard left the house and approached a bread delivery truck on the street. The truck was stopped and the driver was sitting in the driver's seat reviewing his records. Howard stuck the gun in the door and fired, but the delivery driver had jumped out of his seat and dove into the back of the truck. When he noticed two kids playing nearby, he ran out, grabbed them, and drove his truck out of the area. Howard walked straight into a local shoe repair shop and shot 27-year-old John Pillarchik twice, killing him. There was a little boy in the shop as well, but Howard ignored him, a restraint that he wouldn't always show. Howard went next door to the barber shop and shot the owner, 33-year-old Clark Hoover, as well as the 6-year-old boy that was getting a haircut. He ignored the boy's mother, who was now screaming in the shop. As Howard left and walked down the street, he shot at two boys who were watching him out of a window, but missed. Howard tried to enter a tavern, but the people inside had heard the shots and locked the door. He fired two shots through the door and left. Customers were inside, hiding behind the bar, and despite the owner having a 38 caliber pistol, he didn't rush out and try to stop the shooter. 
Howard also tried to enter a restaurant, but it was also locked. His next stop was the drugstore so he could get his revenge on the Coens. When he got to the door, a customer named James Hutton was coming out. The two men knew each other and they greeted each other politely before Howard shot and killed James. As he entered the store, Maurice and Rose were fleeing up the stairs to their apartment. Howard followed and after Rose tried to hide in a bedroom closet, Howard fired through the door three times before opening it and shooting her in the head. He found Rose's mother in another room on the phone with police and killed her as well. Maurice had jumped out a window onto the porch roof, so Howard went to the window and fired one shot that hit Maurice and caused him to fall off the roof. Then he went down to the sidewalk and shot the man again, killing him. He rounded the drugstore and saw some people hanging laundry and shot at them, wounding them in the arms. A motorist had slowed down when he saw James Hutton lying outside and Howard used this opportunity to shoot and kill the driver, Alvin Day. He turned and shot through the windshield of another car, killing Helen Wilson, her mother Emma Matlock, and wounding Helen's 12-year-old son, John Wilson. John would later die in the hospital. An area resident leaned out the window and fired at the man in the street. Howard was hit in the thigh, but it wouldn't stop his rampage. He entered the tailor shop and shot the owner's wife, Helga Zagrino. On the way back to his house, two-year-old Tommy Hamilton looked out his front window and was shot dead by Howard. As sirens began to grow louder, Howard returned home and barricaded himself inside. While inside his house, a local news reporter looked up the address and got his phone number. When he called the house, Howard answered and said that he couldn't explain what he was doing yet. Then the reporter heard gunfire in the background. Soon, police threw tear gas bombs into the window, forcing Howard out of the building. He was arrested and taken to the police station for questioning. There, he gave a detailed account of what he had done that day, and when they stood him up at the end of the interview, they noticed blood on the seat and discovered that he had been shot in the thigh. He was taken to the hospital to be treated for his wound. When the house was searched, they found an arsenal of weapons, multiple guns, knives, and equipment to load his own rounds, of which they found about 700. Howard Unruh was charged with 13 counts of murder and three counts of atrocious assault and battery. While he was in the hospital recovering from his wound, he was assessed by a psychiatrist who found that he suffered from schizophrenia. A judge deemed him unfit to stand trial, and after he was discharged from the hospital, he was sent to the New Jersey Hospital for the Insane, which is now called the Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. Howard remained there until his death on October 19, 2009. He was 88 years old. Whether due to mental illness or not, Howard's anger overtook him and he decided to take it out on the entire neighborhood. Killing indiscriminately, no matter the reason, always makes you a monster. If you're the victim of domestic abuse, please reach out to someone for help. Talk to your local shelter or call the National Domestic Abuse Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. Or you can go to thehotline.org to chat with someone online. This website is set up so that at any time, hitting the escape key twice will take you to a Google search page. That way, if your abuser is nearby, you won't get caught seeking help. If you're having feelings of harming yourself or someone else, or even just need someone to talk to, please contact your local mental health facility, call 911, or call Mental Health America, who operate the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. They're available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Thanks so much for letting me tell you this story. If you enjoyed it, subscribe on whatever platform you're on, hit like, rate us, or leave us a comment. You can also check out our other show, Somewhere Sinister, on YouTube or anywhere you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to support the show, check out our new merch at Teespring. The link is in the description. Thanks again, and be safe.